one of these men survived a plunge over Niagara Falls. What is your name, please? My name is Nathan Boyer. My name is Nathan Boyer. My name is Nathan Boyer. Only one of these men is the real Nathan Boyer. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Dina Merrill, Johnny Carson, and Betty White on to tell the truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by the makers of Easy Off Oven Cleaner. The easy way to make dirtiest ovens sparkle like new. Easy Off Oven Cleaner. Good evening, panel. Good evening, hey, bud. Oh, look bright and shining tonight. Would you mind opening your envelope, take out your affidavit cards for the first time, and follow along as I read. I, Nathan Boyer, was born and raised in New York City. On July 15, 1961, I went over Niagara Falls in the Plunjo Sphere, a rubber-coated six-foot steel ball of my own design. Although I was arrested and fined $113 by the Canadian authorities, I am still one of the two people alive today who have intentionally gone over Niagara Falls and lived to tell about it. Signed, Nathan Boyer. Okay, then panel, you heard these three gentlemen all claiming to be Nathan Boyer, man who went over Niagara Falls and lived to tell about it. And we start this first round of questioning with our own Miss Niagara Falls, Betty White. Thank you, Bud. <laughs> uh, number one, how many people have actually gone over the falls, not just survived, but have actually gone over the falls intentionally? Seven. Uh, number two, do you agree with that? Just about. Number three to you? I do, yes. Number three, what is the name of the island where you can also cross over the island to sightsee around Niagara Falls? Uh, Goat Island. Uh, number two, what is the name of the, the ship that takes you down at the bottom of the falls, takes you around and, and as close to the falls as you can get, except your way? <laughs> I think it's made of mist. Number one, how many boats are there? Two. Number three, how many trips a day do they make? Mm, I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> you could have told me anything. <laughs> Tom Poston. Thank you, Bud. Uh, number three, uh, what is the uh, interior construction of your plunge sphere? Well, it's made of uh, rubber and steel. And uh, uh, it has air or inner tubes, inflated inner tubes, going around the outside wall. And uh, number two, thank you. Number three, number two, what is the, uh, what kind of rubber is that inside? Oh, it's uh, not foam rubber, it's just a plain hard rubber. It's a hard rubber inside? Yes. Number one, what means do you have of, uh, of uh, staying in one place inside the plunge of sphere? Uh, there are two straps, one around my waist and one around my legs, which keep me intact. Thank you. Dina. Uh, number two, where did you build this? <clears throat> the I didn't sphere. build it. I had it built in the Bronx, New York here. Hudson. Yeah, might as well plug that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number three, how did you get this plungosphere to the Niagara Falls? Uh, I took it up to Niagara Falls on a U-Haul trailer. Another plug. <laughs> uh, <laughs> number three, did you do this at night when nobody was looking? Or? That's right, at night. You did. Uh, number one, uh, do you agree with that? Did yes, you do that I, yes, at night? Yes, I did. Who pulled you out? Uh, there was a corporal on a made of mist boat, which you asked about before. Uh, who was on the boat? And they saw us go over. And they were there pretty much after we hit the bottom, me and the sphere. <laughs> Johnny. Uh, number three, why'd you do a nutty thing like this? <laughs> well, I mean, I it is kind of unusual. I mean, well, why did you do it? Well, uh, I was always fascinated by the falls, the raw power of the falls. Yeah. And it was no more than a desire to do it and a, more or less a scientific experiment. Uh, number one, uh, you weren't on your wedding or anything, were you, <laughs> up there? <laughs> no, I wasn't. Uh, it was more or less just the challenge which had always fascinated me. Number two, what, what did it cost? I'm afraid that's it. 
It's time now for you to cease your pondering and wondering why <coughs> and just write down who. <coughs> so if you will please do so now. Figure out for yourselves and mark your ballots without consultation. And vote as you do so for number one, number two, or number three. As is our custom, the team of challengers will get the usual $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. Uh, uh, I thought they all looked uh, good and rugged, number two especially, but number th something about the way number three described this initial challenge of the power of the falls. Dina. Well, I voted for number three too, Bud. And I, uh, I, I really don't know why. Number, number two seems to me to be too big a man to fit into a six foot sphere. I think he's over six feet. And, but between one and three, I, I, I just pick three. Okay, Johnny. I don't really know how you're going to narrow this down tonight. How many questions can you ask about, you know, going over the falls in a barrel to narrow it? But I, I voted for number three also. Did you? Yes. Yeah. Because I, because I teach at Dina's so and I copied hers. <laughs> <laughs> Betty, which one did you select? <coughs> Be honest. Well, they all know, don't know why they voted for three. I voted for two, and I can tell you all the reasons why I almost didn't. <laughs> First of all, he's too big. Secondly, he, a, a man who grows a mustache, I think, is much too dignified maybe to go over the falls. <laughs> but that sneaky little plug he got in there for the fellow that built his plunges there, I think we better keep an eye on him. He might be trying it again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, almost unanimity, near unanimity, I guess you can say, with uh, Tom, Dina, and Johnny for number three, Betty for number two. And now we come to our own particular moment of truth on our show, and we learn which one is right and which one is wrong as we discover who or which of these gentlemen actually went over Niagara Falls and lived to tell about it. So will the real Nathan Boyer please stand up. Uh, yeah. Well, the panel is real sharp tonight. Yes, Tom. Time for just a couple of little questions. Go ahead, quickly. Was it at night, number three? Yes, it was at night. Who did you now, expect to pick you up? Uh, pardon. A uh, partner? When, when you say at night, do you mean that I take the plunge sphere to Niagara Falls at night? No, did you go over at night? No, definitely not. Oh, oh. oh. Well, That's what I misunderstood yeah. in the yeah. original. No, just Who did you expect to pick you up, number three? I'm sorry. Uh, the uh, Canadians, no. the Canadian police, he which got, they did. <laughs> he kind of knew, he knew he'd aggravate them enough to pick him up. I gotta ask one question. How Quickly. come they didn't stop you when they saw you getting out this big thing and getting in it? Why didn't they stop you Well, uh, I anticipated that and no one was around at the time. <laughs> Could I ask one quick Please, one? Quick. Why wasn't it you, number two? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm afraid to lock him up in a cell. He might take it over to falls. <laughs> Let's find out about these other two gentlemen. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you... Oh, by the way, before I'd like to tell you that uh, Nathan has written a book about this called The uh, Pit of Darkness, I believe. And uh, I know if, uh, if, if it's as good as everything else that he's done so far, it's going to be a fine story, and I wish you a lot of luck with it, Nathan. Thank you. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is Conrad Graves. I'm a youth secretary for the YMCA. <laughs> And number two, your real name and what you do, please. My name is DeLacy Thorne, and I am assistant manager of the CBS Musicians. <laughs> well, it was great fun seeing DeLacy Thorne. I've known him for a good many years around CBS. Here. We neither one of us want to say how many. Well, in checking the score, we find out there was only one incorrect vote at $250. The panel was real sharp. That means $250 from Easy Off, as well as a gift package of fine products from the makers of Easy Off. And gentlemen, thanks so much for starting things off on such a fun level. Good night to you, and God bless you. <laughs> now, here is the inside story on how to get your oven really clean. Bill, spots, grease, grime... Yes, a dirty oven can seem just too big a job sometimes. But not when you clean your oven regularly with Easy Off Oven Cleaner. Dramatic results were confirmed by Good Housekeeping Institute using Easy Off on a really dirty oven. Experts spread Easy Off on oven walls, racks, broiler pans. Let it set, then wiped. Caked on grease came right off. Even this grimy oven came sparkling clean. Today, Easy Off is used at Good Housekeeping Institute even before spills, grease, grime build up. 
keep ahead of the job. Use Easy Off to remove spills and greasy film before they bake on. That means no more bother with big oven cleaning jobs. The easy way is to use Easy Off regularly. Keep ahead of the job with America's number one oven cleaner, Easy Off. Used by five times more women than all other oven cleaners combined. And it's earned the good housekeeping seal. Get Easy Off today. Now may I present our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Clarice Richardson. My name is Clarice Richardson. My name is Clarice Richardson. Again, follow along, panel, with your copies of this affidavit, if you will. I, Clarice Richardson, am a high school student. I'm a member of the cheerleading team, which recently won first place in a four-state competition. My first love, however, is horses. I started riding when I was eight years old and later specialized in rodeo riding. Last year, I won my state rodeo championship and then went on to compete in three events in the nationals. I am the national high school rodeo all-round champion cowgirl of 1961. Signed, Clarice Richardson. Very well, you heard these three nice young ladies, each claiming to be Clarice Richardson, champion cowgirl of 1961. Let's start this round of questioning with Johnny Carson. Johnny? Uh, number three, what, which three events did you compete in? Barrel racing, pole bending, and calf roping. Pole bending? Yes. What, what is pole bending? You have the five poles, and it's a timed event. You run your horse straight down alongside of them, weave in and out, and weave back, and then run straight back. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what's, what's the world's record for calf roping? How many seconds? I don't know. Number two, how fast did you uh, rope a calf? The girls don't rope calves. Well, number three was just in a... Were you in calf roping? Yes. Uh, what is your record in roping a calf? 11.1. Wow. Betty? Thank you, bud. Uh, number one, do you know what blistering is? No, I don't. Do you, number two? No. Do you, number three? No. Uh, number two... Uh, number one, I beg your pardon. Oh, Paul, pardon me. <laughs> number one, uh, what, what were the three events that you competed in? I was also in bell roping um, and calf roping. Uh, and number, number two, what were your three events? I was in the cutting contest, the barrel racing, and the pole bending. Uh huh. And number three, what is a hackamore? Um, it's a bridle without a bit. Uh, number one, do you agree with that? Yes. You would. You're sneaky. <laughs> Tom, I uh. I have a kind of a peculiar question. Now, think a little minute, ladies. Number three, do you know what flanking a horse is? Flanking? Flanking. Flanking a horse. Um, you put a strap around the flank to make him buck. Do you agree with that, number two? Yes. Number one? Yes. All right, let me ask it this way. Number three, what do you call it when a horse holds his breath when you're trying to cinch up the girth and you want him to let his breath out? A very nervous horse. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know uh, an expression for that, number two? No. Number one? No. Listen, number one, what's a pig and string? Do you happen to know that? A pig and string is a string you tie around the calf's feet when you're roping them. Thank you. Nina. Number one, what state are you from? I'm from Arizona. Number two? Montana. Number three? Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a nice uh, all-state group here. <laughs> uh, what was the four-state competition, number one? What four states were competing? Well, in my state, there are Arizona, Arkansas, Colorado, and Utah. I see. Uh, no. mm. Guess that's it. We have to leave it right there in those four states for the moment. I don't know what state you're in, but let's see how you do about the voting. Do so now, if you will, please, panel, without consultation, as usual, and simply mark your ballot for number one. Number two, or number three. Aren't they pretty ladies? Though? Yes, they sure are. All ballots marked very well. Tom, <laughs> yours first. For whom did you vote this time? I voted for number three, uh, partly, I guess, on, on the basis of the fact that there was a little confusion there about who entered and who placed in the calf roping contest among girls. I Dina. Yeah. Sorry, Tom. Dina? I'll go with the winner here. <laughs> I voted for number three, too. She seemed to know a great deal about her subject. Okay, Johnny. 
No, I'm going to go with number one this time. Uh, number three said that the world's record, or her record, was 11.2 for calf roping. I think the men's record is, uh, is somewhere over 14. And number two said that women do not rope calves, and I've seen them, so I go for number one. Okay, Betty. Any kind of a friend would tell me you had seen women roping calves. On the strength of the fact that I didn't think girls did rope calves, I voted for number two. Oh, good. We're, we're and coming. besides, I can't see Tom's paper. <laughs> <laughs> So this time, then we have Tom and Dina voting for number three, Johnny for number one, and Betty for number two. Let's find out which is right and which is wrong. As we learn now, which one of these three very pretty young misses is the champion cowgirl for 1961? Willa Real, Clarice Richardson, please stand up. Now let's hit <laughs> Thank you very much. Do they have cow roping for girls? Yes, it's they called do. breakaway roping. And, and what, is, what is your actual time? Was it 11? 11.1. You don't have to tie the calf. Uh -huh. You just have oh. to rope it. Ah, that makes a difference. I see. All right, number one, would you tell us your first and real, your real name and what you really do? My name is Janet Champion, and I'm a featured ice skater with the Shipstad and Johnson Ice Follies now at Madison Square Garden. And I've never been on a horse in my life. <laughs> Understand it. You can't get your feet in the stirrups with those ice skates on. <laughs> Number two, your real name and what do you do? I'm Marianne Hillier, and I'm an account executive for Pantry Master Kitchen Wines, and I'm also the current Miss New York City. Bless you. Well, we checked the score this time. We find it two and two. There were two right and two wrong. For those two incorrect votes, ladies, you collect a total of $500 at $250 each from Easy Off, as well as a gift package of the fine products from the makers of Easy Off. You've added mighty prettily to our evening's entertainment, and we thank you for that. Good night, and God bless you. And now, here's a word about a fine product to relieve muscular pains for hours. Heat. Backache due to muscle strain, fatigue. No matter how hard you rub, no salve, no liniment penetrates into stiff, aching muscles. Get immediate relief, hours of relief of backache's minor pain. Get heat. Heat works the only counter-irritation way doctors everywhere accept. Brush on heat. Immediately heat penetrates into skin, replaces pain with soothing warmth. So stiff, aching muscles relax. Relief lasts for hours. For backache's minor pain, get immediate relief. Get heat. And now a word about Dristan cough medicine. When a cough has you in its grip, in the throat, in the chest, stop it with new Dristan decongestant cough medicine that breaks the grip of the cough without codeine or narcotics. Dristan contains the decongestant most prescribed by doctors, reaches chest area in minutes, quickly breaks up bronchial congestion, eases tightness in chest, loosens the cough, thus breaks the grip of the cough. To stop coughs of colds, bronchitis, flu, get Dristan decongestant cough medicine. Now, panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. <laughs> What is your name, please? My name is John M. Steele. My name is John M. Steele. My name is John M. Steele. Again, panel, you've had a look. Will you kindly follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, John M. Steele, was a paratrooper during World War II. My battalion jumped into France before dawn on D-Day, June 6, 1944. Instead of dropping in the prearranged zone, I landed in a small French village. My parachute caught on a church steeple. For two hours, I hung there in full view while the troops fought it out in the streets below. I played dead. After the attack, the Germans cut me down and took me prisoner. Three days later, during an American tank attack, I escaped. The incident is told in Cornelius Ryan's book, The Longest Day. The book is being made into a movie, and my part is played by Red Buttons. Signed, John M. Steele. All set and ready to play our game, gentlemen? Very well. You all heard them, each one, claiming to be John Steele, World War II paratrooper extraordinary. Let's start this round of questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Did you live? Did you? Oh, yes, of course you did. <laughs> 
Uh, number three, what's the term used when a trooper doesn't jump? Do you happen to remember that? Well, I never met one that didn't jump. Well, they did have a term for it. Do you know it? No. Number two? Chicken. <laughs> Number one, is there possibly another name, another term given to that? I don't recall. Uh, number one, uh, who was your commanding officer? Number one. Number one, the, the, uh, the general. <laughs> the general commander. Well, we had two, uh, Major, Major General Matt Ridgway and uh, General Gavin. Uh, thank you. Number two, could you tell me the outfits that jumped on D-Day? 82nd Airborne and 101st Airborne. Thank you. Dina. Uh, and which uh, outfit were you, number three? 82nd? 82nd. 82nd. That's right. Number two? Which outfit were you? 82nd. Oh, you're all in the 82nd. Okay. Uh, how many jumps did you have to do, number one? How many jumps did you have to do in your training before you were allowed to do a combat jump? Before you sent out a combat jump? Well, you qualified with five jumps. Five jumps. Number two, what kind of a plane was it that dropped you? C-47. Johnny, uh, number two, you play Red, uh, Red Buttons plays your part in this? Yes, sir. Have you met Red Buttons? No, sir. Uh, number three, have you? No, I have not. Number one, you know what Red Buttons' real name is? No, I don't. Uh, number two, does Red Buttons suffer from acrophobia? I've never met the gentleman. Uh, number one, do you, do you know that is a fact or not? I believe he does. Uh -huh. Number three, what was the name of the French village in which you landed? St. Mary Glees. St. Mary Glees? Yes. Uh -huh. um, I passed. I think I got the nail. It's all right, Betty. Oh, boy. <coughs> Number one, what do you call the ropes on a parachute? Uh, they're the shroud lines. Number three, do you agree with that? Yes, that's correct. Number two, uh, St. Mary Glees, is that the name of the village where yes. you landed? Uh, how far was that from the prearranged zone? About two miles. And number three, when the Germans cut you down and took you prisoner, where did they take you? Well, first they took me to um, a large house, I guess a chateau, in the village, and then they moved me out the next day. Number two, do you agree with that? Yes. Uh, number one, where were you taken first after you were taken prisoner? Absolutely first. Whom, who was the first German you saw? Uh, aside from the men who actually took you prisoner. Hans Not Hans Conrad, John. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I saw some more Germany. Number two, who was the first one you saw, the officer? It was a second lieutenant. Well, we have to let it go at that, if we can, because our time is gone, and it's time for you now to mark your ballots, which you all do so well, so kindly do so now. Mark the next ballot with your vote right now without consultation. And as you do so, of course, as before, you'll vote for number one, number two, or number three. Gee, Willie did it again to us this week, I think. They're all pretty well briefed. All set. Tom, for whom this time? I voted for number one. Uh, I knew the names of uh, at least a couple of commanding officers over there. I really should uh, know this specifically, you know. I may have dropped this, except I dropped the 101st. Were you well, flying the C-47s, yeah. were you? I, I was in the 13th airplane over Sherberg on D-Day morning. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Dropping <laughs> Of course, I was only seven years old. At the, time. <laughs> <laughs> the reason they jumped there was so scared, flying the yeah. <laughs> Well, without any trouble at all. Dina, your vote. Well, but I'm going with number three again. This seems to be my evening for three. But uh, number three, if, if, if movies have anything to do with this, he looks more like Red Buttons than any of the rest of them do. That's my only reason. Type casting in reverse. Yes. <laughs> Johnny, I'm going to go along with Chicken Poston. Yes. <laughs> I voted for one because uh, he said he, he thought that Buttons suffers from acrophobia, which Red admits very freely. He was petrified hanging in his people doing Really? It. Yeah. And Betty. Well, I've been wrong on two twice tonight. I don't see why I should change, but <laughs> on the strength of that chicken answer, he didn't say he didn't know the term. He just came back with a very good term. So I'm going to go with number two. Okay, widely dispersed this time. Yeah. Two for one, one for two, and one for three. Broken up among our panel. 
And we'll find out now who's right and who's wrong as we learn which one of these gentlemen is the real World War II paratrooper. So will the real John Steele please stand up? Uh, <laughs> Buddy, sir, thank you very much. Tom and Johnny got that one. Yes, Tom. It's kind of interesting. Would you, you hung from a church steeple, right? Right. Would you uh, tell us what the name of that town, St. Mary Glees, means? I don't know. Well, it's a, a glees, it's a church. Yeah, it's a church. That's right, that's right. So you were I think it's also interesting to note that this gentleman went on in his soldiery to uh, jump into uh, Holland, also later in the Battle of the Bulge. He really had quite a, quite a career. We're very proud to have him here. <laughs> Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? Yes, I am, my name is Willis Slain. I'm president of the Hatteras Yacht Company, builders of the world's largest fiberglass yachts. Aha. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you maybe were in chicken husbandry. I didn't know. <laughs> Number three, your real name and what do you do? My name is Frank Brandt, and I work for Compton Advertising in New York. <laughs> and, uh, yes, I'm also a partner of Tom Poston's, but I've never met him before <laughs> in a puppet venture that we have together. Oh, yeah, with Boris? <laughs> yes. Runanian? That's going to be a That's big right. thing. You, yeah. you never met him before. It's going to be a very big... No, no, I don't know the gentleman. Island partner, you see there? <laughs> you never know, do you? Yes. Well, he's another one of the poor suckers that... <laughs> <laughs> well, let's no, see how you made out tonight by way of an investment. We had exactly uh, two correct and two incorrect for $500 total from Easy Off, gentlemen. Not too bad, I think, for the fun you had and we had, too, as well as a gift package of fine products from the makers of Easy Off. And we thank you, gentlemen. Good night. God bless you. Well, I guess that's it. We've got to leave tonight, panel. Good, good night, night, Bud. Bud Con, you're saying good night from Easy Off and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Tell the Truth has been brought to you tonight by Dristan Decongestant Cough Medicine. Stops coughing due to colds or bronchial irritation. Dristan Decongestant Cough Medicine. This is Johnny Olson saying goodnight for To Tell the Truth, this program was pre-recorded. <laughs>